Welcome to the Gen X versus Gen Z podcast. I'm Santanu representing Gen X. I'm Santiago representing Gen Z. Awesome. So this is our fourth episode. We we've made it. We're, we've made it. We're we're making it. So this is this is fun. It's been uh, some pretty interesting conversations we've been having. Today I wanted to talk about the idea of dealing with anger mm-hmm. and perhaps seeing uh the differences, similarities of how our generations deal with it um, and, and approach the idea of, of anger. Now, from, from the Gen X standpoint, when we, when we have anger, a lot of it was sort of, I guess, modeled by what we would see by essentially boomers Mm -hmm. in the movies and television. In some ways it was almost I don't know, encourage, glamorize, you use it as a fuel to yeah. drive you, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know that your generation has that same kind of relationship with anger. Um, I think it just presents itself differently in movies. Yeah. Because that's a huge place where people learn about anger. Yeah. Um, Jack Nicholson has this approach, he, uh, the actor, to uh, to presenting anger. Because that's what he's known for, mm-hmm. is acting different kinds of anger. Uh-huh. And he feels like anger is not its own emotion. Hmm. It's an emotion produced by other emotions. Uh-huh. Kind of like you can, you can be angry because of disgust or angry mm-hmm. because of betrayal and disappointment okay. and, and, and sadness. So there's all these. It's like a defensive mechanism, mm-hmm. right? He's a, in his opinion. Yeah, he's in his opinion. <laughs> So I don't know. I, I feel like the rhetoric, a lot of it's around vengeance in movies now. Mm-hmm. Like John Wick is like the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's all vengeance yeah, and anger. Yeah, I know a Gen Xer. <laughs> he is. Yeah. Uh, so for, yeah. So in the Gen X world, when we sort of step outside the realm of movies and, you know, we're, we've grown up now, you know, uh, Sometimes what I find is we, many times we've internalized our anger, maybe because of our latchkey upbringing, we weren't, we were just sort of expected to take it. This is how things are. Do you think that's like a lot of repressed anger as being like a possibly, which might explain, you know, we, our generation, and I'm sure, well, you can speak to this for your generation, but you know, our generation, we we do a lot of substance abuse, you know, mm-hmm. um, with alcohol and drugs and such, even though we grew up on this Just Say No campaign right. in the 80s, which... Relatively ineffective from what I've heard. Yeah, very ineffective. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I think that, you know, later on as we grew up, I, I find that perhaps our generation used a lot of those things as coping mechanisms Absolutely, yeah. for the the repressed anger. Um, now, that's, that's still present. Yeah. I'd say that that's still present. Yeah. Um, I think it's a little bit diversified into what people do mm-hmm. to escape it. I think it's less drinking and maybe more weed. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and I'm on a college campus, so maybe I have a different experience around this, but both are popular. Right. Um, and both are often used to escape some feeling of some emotion and maybe not anger, but an emotion that leads to anger. So what I'm wondering is, is if your generation has more depression, sadness, and anger, as I've been told uh, is sort of depression or sadness turned outward Mm. Mm -hmm. or the other way around uh depression is anger turned it's like boiled over yeah 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 resentment right a lot of resentment in in i think my generation yeah Uh, a lot of it's valid a lot of it just kind of boils from isolation Mm -hmm. which is a topic we've talked before on this podcast yeah um so I think that could could contribute to just general anger. I know that if there's intergenerational anger in yeah. that generation, being yeah. angry at previous generations, I think. But I'm not sure that's unique to my generation. Yeah, yeah well, something that I know we Xers have experienced a lot of, be it the media and all other forms, just in, in the cultural uh, landscape that we grew up in, is is that we would point we would justify our anger by what someone else has done 
Mm-hmm. You know, so we've been wronged, you know, and so or someone has been wrong and it's their fault. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of blaming, you know, and I'm I know that this stuff happens today, but I'm just wondering, like for for us, like to admit fault was just mm-hmm. something you don't do. Interesting. Uh, you know, and I'd and, like to say that that's yeah. gotten. Yeah. Ha- yes, has I'd it? like to say that. Yeah. And in my anecdotal experience, people admit when they're wrong. Mm-hmm. After, um, and I think that's more culturally accepted mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and expected. Mm. But it also, I think, creates a culture trying to... It, it decreases how valid it can be sometimes when everybody just kind of says it without meaning it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Not everybody, but but there is that there is that aspect of it for mm-hmm. sure. Or just true. to kind of avoid anger mm-hmm. by, by kind of just saying something you don't fully believe yeah you know? yeah let's explore anger like you were talking about jack nicholson kind yeah. of defining it um what what is this feeling what 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 is it truly when we think of anger is it it it, it creates clearly <clears throat> it creates energy right yeah, fire it creates a very fire energy and sure you can use it mm-hmm. as a mechanism to drive behavior and perhaps yeah. you can channel it in good ways not the best fuel right though right. i think it it, it can like again john wick movies right he's driven by an anger created from like a need for vengeance mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and we we, we all kind of want that we all yeah. i think my generation and i think most generations really identify with that with the vengeance storyline mm-hmm. and we all also kind of recognize that it's not really the most ethical or noble goal right um there's a lot of video games that are just like oh i've been wrong now i'm on a path to vengeance right and it's like a huge right aspect and people like it somewhat because it indulges what people don't think is always ethical to do in your real life and you just you just described probably 95% of Kung Fu movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the training I, montage. Right. right. Well, yeah. The Why is our antagonist, our main character, yeah. training, you know, to, yeah, yeah. Or, or, you know, on this path to, you know, yeah. right the wrongs. The most American martial arts movie, right? Mm-hmm. Karate Kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what it's about. Right. Def- it's defensive bullies, but like it's also vengeance. Right, but, right. Yeah. Wh- whether you want to accept that or not, that is the case. Like Daniel wanted revenge yeah. on the Cobra guys straight yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but Miyagi in that movie also is like a, is a guiding voice. Uh, yeah. That. So the, that helped sort of neutral, like tame yeah. that fire a little bit and be like, well, you know, let me teach you the ways of martial arts and mm-hmm. you know and there's that scene in the boat it's like why you know uh why train you know yeah. and uh, and because then... that feels like an important thing to weed out when you're approaching being a student in martial arts uh and being um insightful about the reasons you want to learn martial arts yeah. do you want it because you have some kind of resentment and you want to be physically powerful and able to defeat other people or yep. do you want it for another reason do you want it to build up yourself your culture your 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 way of being yeah and i think today in today's landscape we have the sophistication to be able to say oh yeah i want it for building myself and my self confidence but yeah, inside yeah. yeah but inside it's like yes i can tell you want you you want to kick someone's butt yeah. like you you or you want to you want that feeling yeah and there's a difference between wanting to be able to right defensively right uh, and wanting to really get that opportunity to be defensive to right. take it out on somebody right. that that anger is dangerous right? yes and this is sort of my my critique on um sort of the competitive martial sports culture yeah. is that when you get too when you go down too far in that realm you're just wanting to yeah 
clash and bash with folks then it doesn't become about self-defense anymore yeah you know and for me uh i very much follow elio gracie's line of thinking and reasoning for self-defense your goal is to escape safely yeah. and be able to get home safely you know it's it's, it's simultaneously a cultural art mm -hmm. an exploration of kind of the human body and, and what it can do and and all of this physics and then that way it's a philosophy and a a a defensive mechanism right right and and a combative one right. and that's and that's that's awesome but if you're focusing on the combative mechanism yeah more so than anything else so. well you know what that also this reminds me of is star wars and the story of anakin skywalker yeah right you know he lost his mother at a right. young age clearly there was anger there yeah. and so then this this was sort of a an in uh, uh, a cultural encapsulation of when you are motivated to to train and grow and develop, yeah, but it's because of an anger, a dark force, yeah, you know, it can lead to very dark results. Star Wars is a really interesting example too, mm -hmm. because George Lucas was directly based, uh, inspired by uh, Japanese martial arts and samurai films. Mm. Uh, Darth Vader's armor mm -hmm. is supposed to look like a futuristic samurai. Interesting, interesting. Uh, so there's definitely that storyline that kind of harkens back to martial arts movies and mm -hmm. stories about vengeance. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, defeating the powerful side. Right. You know, kind right. of. Um, which is interesting. Right, right. And, and and then you see, you know, the the world of the Jedi's. Yeah. And uh, from what I understand, Lucas based the character of Yoda loosely off of Morihei Ueshiba, the founder of Aikido. No way. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I, mean, I did not know that. Yeah. And uh, and so, uh, so you know, kind of because huh. uh, uh, Ueshiba, you know, with his development of Aikido, you know, was very much about blending force and right. energy and not not going force on force and yeah. blending with the energy and turning it around. You know? There's a big, like the, the dichotomy between Jedi and Sith. Mm -hmm. in Star Wars. It's very similar to Dune. If you're watching the video, I'm wearing a Dune shirt. Oh, nice. <laughs> the the villainous side is portrayed as giving into emotion. Like mm -hmm. that's what's villainous. Whereas the quote good side, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the Jedi um, are people that have self-control. Yeah. And that's what it means to be a Jedi is to have self-control over your emotions. Right. And yeah. experience them. Yeah. But, but not, you know, give in to the, to the, to the temptation of acting on solely on anger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's like a huge aspect of, of that. Totally. And um, this kind of reminds me of uh, something someone said in the, in the world of, mixed martial arts and UFC and all that is that uh, just the, the, uh, the training uh, mech, uh, training be of the, of the athletes that compete at, in those levels, you know, the folks were saying like, these are folks who are operating on a very different psychology. You like, yeah. you might think like you can fight, but right. these guys have, massive demons right that right. they're the, and this this was earlier i'm not saying that this is the case now but this was earlier on you know and like you know and there are other martial artists saying like you know i thought i had demons and but these guys are on a whole other track yeah. like a lot of these folks like if they didn't have martial arts they'd be in prison well to use a dark example like that you see that in historical training for like soldiers in previous previous generations, previous wars mm. World War II, it's kind of written into the the mode of training soldiers to create resentment in them, to mm. create anger, mm. to to create trauma. Interesting, and that will make them quote unquote better soldiers. It makes them vicious soldiers. Don't know about better. Yeah, but like make yeah. sure that they're angry, that they want to prove themselves. In some way. Yeah, and that's that's unhealthy. That's very unhealthy. Um, but it's it it it's the theology behind that anger being what should drive you right there's the best drive whereas like rocky yeah to use it to use an american boxing mm -hmm. kind of like story yeah i don't remember him being that angry he has reasons to be resentful he, right uh, all these things he's poor and he's right. not getting the respect he deserves all this stuff and he's generally considered to be a loser right right, right. but i don't remember anger ever being a part of his story that's a good point yeah yeah i don't I, at least in one yeah 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 i don't really remember yeah too much of that because rocky was always just kind of a uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah but um yeah so it's 
it's interesting through the from like the 60s through the early 2000s yeah you know, maybe even the mid 2000s like there's there's almost ah, I, maybe this is over maybe it might be hyperbolic but almost a a glamorization of anger yeah you know like yeah get mad do yeah. it you know um I don't know. And, and I don't know if that, like, I, I don't see that right. culturally in movies anymore or as yeah. much. I think it, it only comes up in vengeance stories yeah. where you have to have overwhelming reason to be angry. Right. And I think that's the way it's forgiven. Right. It's like if your character, John Wick, lost his wife and his dog mm -hmm. uh, or in the upcoming Monkey Man movie, he's lost his family or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Mm -hmm. Then we can forgive the character for trying to be going off of anger. Right. But usually this lesson, the narrative has some kind of like, that wasn't the reason to be doing this. Yeah. There's a, there's a justice race reason to be doing right. this. Vengeance is not the reason. Right. And I think like culturally, that's something that we're moving towards is, is not accepting that kind of passionate response even though we i think we still glamorize it right and in martial arts definitely the competitive aspect we glamorize it that, yeah. that kind of like when i when i say somebody oh i study martial arts and i like to practice martial arts it's like oh well do you compete like what's your, what's right, your ratio right. what's your kill death ratio and it's just like <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry i don't i don't do that yeah yeah that's uh, it, isn't that interesting that there's there's this stigma right away yeah uh onto that it's like it, you know, it's like no, I think Jedi. You know, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. don't. You know, we we we're doing it for uplifting. We're we're using right. the light side of the force. You yeah. know, the for uplift and mm -hmm. building and developing ourselves and building community and right. and uh, creating a, creating a safe atmosphere for people to express their energy. Mm -hmm. And maybe if they have darkness in them, use it. This is what Mr. Miyagi tried to do with Daniel. Right, right. Is let's use. Obviously, there's a lot of anger in you yeah. 15 year old boy right. 16 year old boy you know so let's use the martial arts <laughs> teach you a work ethic yeah. first of all you know so you can let some of that out and then mm -hmm. training so uh, and understanding the mechanism of the mindset of getting good yeah. which is a long disciplined journey you know uh, and I, I do like that because it also demonstrates that anger isn't we shouldn't be you shouldn't feel shameful for right. feeling your anger. Right. And that's that's something that could happen if the pendulum swings too far is like feeling right. a shame about your emotion right. and, and wanting to tamp that down, which makes it worse, builds yeah. the resentment, right? Yeah. So I think that it's accepting the fact that you feel angry, right? but making sure that you put that to a good use right. and resolve that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely very interesting. Um, I know that Gen Z... It definitely has uh, interaction with this substance, perhaps more than Gen Xers do, just purely because of the time uh, it was sort of released, is uh, is fentanyl. This is yeah. a killer. This is a terrible, terrible substance mm -hmm. that leads to, I think, death instantaneously. Yeah, if it's a strong enough amount. Yeah. Sure. Um, Which is not, a, it's not, it doesn't have a, I can't remember the term, the scientific term, but yeah. it does, you don't need a lot. You know, in our in our era of Gen Xers, it was um, it, it was the the big killer was crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, co co cocaine, crack cocaine. Those were the the big heavy like ah. But fentanyl seems like it's just on a whole other scale. And well, heroin before that, Texas mm. especially was having a heroin epidemic. Interesting. I, I, not a one that was widely talked about mm -hmm. but it was a it was a big problem yeah and now fentanyl for sure is is a big problem because it's easy to lace into things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um let yeah. me tell you about the cocaine bit yeah. uh in for for gen extras because there's sort of a dual thing happening here but i don't know that this dual thing happens with gen extras and and fentanyl um the dual part of cocaine was that it got you ramped up mm -hmm. so it was all about accomplishments achievements like right. having thinking grandiose thoughts and making grandiose things happen like a better adderall yeah yeah like like people would do like huge concerts and performances and yeah. shows while on cocaine yes. because they were just ramped up Absolutely. to the 11th level yeah, yeah. like sunny d they performed um 
like like in Russia with no shirts on and it was just like in extreme cold oh, and he's just dancing like crazy <laughs> and I was like oh that's an amazing performance was, oh no it's cocaine it's cocaine <laughs> it's cocaine but you know I wouldn't necessarily say that I mean I'm sure there are elements trace elements of this you know of anger and depression fueling if, clearly there's a there's a feeling of a lack you know yeah. in order to do that um, but, you know, in addition to the rush that you get, you know, there was also this feeling of like, I'm going to do amazing things. Creative. Is yeah. there that kind of thinking and feeling with your generation when it comes to that substance use, or is it purely to deal with emotions? So I know that, uh, that's, that's a, such a good question. I think that in my generation, a lot of drugs and alcohol are used to evade emotion, mm -hmm. but not anger as much as depression. Uh -huh. Right, right. And not right. to not to feel things intensely, but to nullify them. Mm. Um, and mm. so, I think like if we think if we're comparing fentanyl to uh, cocaine, mm -hmm. it's they're 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 opposite in their effect. Mm -hmm. One's a downer, one's an upper. Oh, right. So okay. fentanyl um leaves you like mellow and incapable of interacting so it's a barbiturate it's yeah it goes yeah down exactly and, uh, co cocaine is an amphetamine it makes you right right, right right yeah. right yeah yeah i forgot that terminology um so i think that that's part of the obsession mm -hmm. with it um like weed is is, mm -hmm. is huge into that for, yeah. i, I think i'm personally um like Pro legalizing it and, and making yeah. it and making it like taxable. Yeah, but, yeah. But but it's it it's what it is. It 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 nullifies how you feel for a certain amount of time. It, yeah. it, it at least softens it. For sure. And for Gen Xers, weed uh kind of served uh for the most part, kind of like the way it served boomers, like almost like a mellowing out and actually opening up creative channels type of thing. Right. Um, but I and don't I don't know if it's still used like that. It's still used like that. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of friends that use it pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. I'm a weird case. Mm -hmm. Uh to be completely open, I don't I don't drink or smoke. Mm -hmm. I'm one hundred percent sober. Mm -hmm. And Same. uh nice. Uh, <laughs> uh which I guess doesn't make for a good contrast in this Gen X versus Gen Z. No, but, yeah, we're going off of experience yeah. of other people. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> we're both straight edge. So <laughs> But but I'll, my closest friends smoke a lot, uh -huh, right? and, uh -huh. and it's and it's and and in some cases it can have negative long term impacts that I've right. seen, and there's not a lot of studies mm -hmm. on the long term impacts of cocaine. I mean, uh, weed. Yeah. But um. But I know it can mellow you out to a point where it's difficult to carry relationships. Yeah. Um, and it can make you irritable and and mm -hmm. and and uh, sap some of your drive. Yeah. So that's like the main difference there is cocaine kind of like amps your drive. Right. Right. Which is and it's worse for your brain. Yeah. But, but yeah. weed saps it up to, to us and to can to yeah. an extent if it with as that's my understanding with continued use. Right. Uh. But it's it's like. Is it worse than alcohol? Like, yeah, no, in my opinion. Like, yeah, yeah. And, well, and now it comes in the form of gummies, I think. Right, or, right. Uh, they have like various uh, types. There's there's a um, THC one, yeah. um, which is, which I think that's the psychoactive gummy. And then there's the, um, oh, what is it called? They use it for with the oils. Um, I know what you're talking about. I, it, I can't speak to this because because I, I don't, I don't, uh, <laughs> you know. Not the name. Dang it! And <laughs> there's there's a brand that you can give to your dog. I, right, I, I, right, I feel right. like that's an awesome advancement in society is mellowing out your dog because yeah. we do it with cats all the time with catnip. CBD oil. CBD that's, oil. That's that's what it is. So the CBD is the mellowing, yeah. and the THC is the psychoactive. CBD pellets for your dog. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay, I got the terms. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, uh, so a lot of this, you know, as cope, ultimately coping mechanisms for emotions so that we can, um, we, we can basically escape them. Yeah, that that's how I sort of view. It. And so even though, you know, I'm completely straight edge, I'll say this, sometimes, uh, and this is part of my Gen X upbringing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will listen to music yeah. really loudly, you yeah. know, like especially if if I'm if if I feel like I'm triggered, I'm in a mood or whatever, right. you know, I just crank it up, and I just feel 
better afterwards because right. it was kind of we uh, all do things yeah. to escape yeah right? like and, and that can be some healthy use of drugs can be unhealthy use of drugs and right alcohol. um and a lot of people i just want to clarify a lot of people in my generation do it just to socially like it's not mm -hmm. it's not an unhealthy mm -hmm. dependency it's it's yeah. it's just kind of like just to chill out with just somebody. It, yeah i and I, I and either way i'm not judging here i don't right. wanna, i don't want right, to create right. that feeling but but I think also, I think more people are getting diagnosed with ADHD. I don't think it's like rising. I don't know about it. Maybe it is because yeah. of TikTok, but, yeah. but uh, being introduced so young. But it definitely, you can call it maybe over prescriptions. Like yeah, well, people... you know, I, I sometimes get the feeling that it's becoming overdiagnosed. Yeah, I think that's a problem in general, just yeah. overdiagnosing everything. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, it leads to a lot more Adderall out there. Yeah, and sure. and it's crazy because, uh, you know, it's like why why do we even have such things? It's because of a of a structural system we've set up in place. Absolutely, and it's it's favored it it, it has favoritism towards a particular neurological predisposition. Right, 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 absolutely. So there's a word that I like that's that's become a little bit more commonplace now. It's called neurodivergence. Yes. You know, people who just have, whose brain operates differently. Differently than the normal. Yeah, it doesn't mean that they can't, they're not capable of high levels of abstract thinking and high levels of accomplishment, but they do it in a different way. Absolutely. You know, um, whether that's like severe ADHD or autism. Absolutely. Like they, they, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's a really cool term. It, it, yeah. Yeah. And and I like that it's now like, I, I wish they had that term right. <laughs> when I was growing up, yeah. you know, cause then they would figure, figure me out. You know, I had, that's not, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Go, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, that's something huge for my generation yeah. now. I and mean, this is very recent development. Yeah. But autism, the word mm. it used, it's like it, it used to be kind of a slur. Yeah. Kind yeah, of, yeah like yeah. you would just call somebody that. Yeah. It's still there. Like yeah. people still use certain words yeah. to mean somebody in, in, by because they're neurodivergent or comparing mm -hmm. to somebody that's neurodivergent. But now it's also become like a like something that people take pride in mm -hmm. and and will say like, oh, I exhibit autistic like. Oh, interesting like uh like qualities sometimes well, they might say of. something more on the lines of i'm on the spectrum i'm on the spectrum right? yeah which yeah. is also another way of saying yeah that. um yeah it, it's it's really interesting because now uh we are talking about it you know it's right. it's out in the open we have some language uh behind it. we didn't have this uh growing up in the 80s and the 90s um you know they would just say yeah uh he, he's got a learning disorder or you know he's you know I, this was this was told to my parents by my uh my sophomore english teacher who you know i really like you know, right, but, right, right. but he told my parents during a PTA conference that I am not college bound. And that, really? that broke my parents' hearts, you know, what? you know, I mean, I have a master's degree now, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. so clearly that was not correct, you know, Absolutely. you know, um, but that was the way of thinking back, back then, you know, because, oh, he doesn't perform in the right way, like the, the academics, although in his classes, you know, was the was a class where I actually gave speeches for the first time. I got in front of the class and and gave presentations, and I shocked yeah. everybody in my class. Well, you're a talented speaker, and I, nobody and, knew yeah. that because I was a very quiet kid. But mm -hmm. then when it came time for me to present, all of a sudden, you know, you people are like, "What? That's crazy!" You know, and uh, and so, but but even in that class, like the teacher didn't couldn't see like, oh. His strength yeah. is in the performing arts, right, right. you know, and, and speech and communications, not necessarily in literature, you know, and, mm -hmm. and so, you know, he's absolutely college bound. He can go this track, but no. Right. right. You know what I mean? So um, it's it, difficult to conform. Yes. To that. Yeah. Yes. And when you, when you are, so when you have those labels mm -hmm. thrust upon you, yeah. you know, it's easy to operate from a place of self-defeat. Yeah. You know, and that self-defeat can either drive you to depression or drive you to anger. Especially when that develops in the younger years where you have teachers and mm -hmm. professors saying that. Yeah. About you. Like one of my favorite books is from, from a childhood books is where the wild things are. Because mm -hmm. it's all about getting to understand your anger. Yeah. What it, what it is, right. how to verbalize it. Right. How to not hate it, yep. you know, and as a parent, how to deal with it too. Yeah. Um, and you know, being okay to stomp around and be a monster, kind of, but right. as long as it's not negative. Yeah. Um, or ne or targeted. Right. right. 
Right. So yeah, it's ext- it must be extremely difficult to to harness that within students. Cause I also, you know, I think a lot of the anger comes out of impatience, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that's is, it. Oh yeah. yeah. There you go. Impatience definitely leads to anger and uh, impatience uh, is kind of, um, you know, when you think about that idea is it's like, well, you want something to happen, but it's not happening fast enough. So, yeah. you know, the, the ability to just be present, be yeah. in the moment, let things happen. And if we're operating off of my assumption that that attention spans are getting shorter mm-hmm. due to things like social media, yeah. uh, then that imp- the amount of impatience out there grows. Right. And I don't think it's unique to my generation, yeah. but it's something I see at least in my generation. Well, yeah. absolutely, because your generation is so used to seeing yeah. information come so fast. And, so fast. and even, you know, you're, you're in the yeah. RTF program at UT, so you study films. Like if you compare films from uh, from like my era yeah. versus the films that are currently being made today, yeah. like films from my era and before, like the beginning of the film the intro took a long time to get through you'd have to go through the credits like the credits and, at the beginning is yes the and and change. just the very prolonged intro before yeah. anything even starts to happen well i, I don't want to get into the, like the nitty-gritty of, of film editing these days for mm-hmm. sure but you definitely see now films being more influenced by social media styles mm. and and that kind of editing style that kind of schizophrenic half like like fast-paced mm-hmm. i like it sometimes people think it's quirky it's not quirky it's pretty mainstream now yeah in my yeah. opinion but uh but yeah it's 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 all changing for sure and i and i love long form films yeah 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 it's hard to show them to friends outside. oh yeah. a, a lot of my friends are outside of the film world right right uh, because film majors are terrible <laughs> uh, <laughs> i say that as a film major right? <laughs> um but it's hard to show it's hard to get somebody to see, and understandably right everybody has busy lives but it's hard to get somebody to sit down for like a three hour right film because, right right yeah attention spans and, and yeah. there should be like a movement hashtag sit through it you sit know sit through it yeah. yeah like like this this is good this is like vegetables yeah. like this is good for you to- and here's the thing i have on some level adhd i, I, I don't want to like i do as well. i don't want to oh, like over diagnose myself yeah uh but I think everybody in my life is convinced I have some level of ADHD mm-hmm. and that includes hyperfixations. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I hyperfixate in, in the things I like, which are films. Yeah. 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 And I, so I can sit down for that amount of time because right. I'm blocking everything else out. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I, and you know, again, a, a lot of the, uh, the idea of being impatient can lead to anger. And so then the expression of that anger is something that I feel, find is interesting in particular in relation to the world of martial arts how martial arts can be this vehicle for anger and right. it can it can take it and really channel it through to kind of mm, destructive ways let's just yeah. let's just be completely blunt about my feelings about it but it also has the ability to take it and channel it in very pre- productive ways as well i think some of that also and correct me if i'm wrong but it's because of the patience required to learn martial arts yeah you need commitment and patience right and, and to be in there for a while it's right. not uh, it's not something that you really just pick up and learn within a short amount of time yeah which like i'm on a busy schedule gotta learn this to create my destructive force that right. not it might nullify that anger over if you just keep going over a long amount of time yeah yeah and that that's that's one of the things that i i really love about both uh kung fu and specifically elio gracie's jujitsu um is that both require patience Mm -hmm. like you're it's not like going to a kickboxing gym where they put gloves on you and you start hitting the bags and start start letting those demons out you know um, you know, there's like a lot of technique, a lot of refinement, a lot of attention to details, lots of things to memorize and, and things like that. So you have to really apply a very hefty cognitive effort with that. And that requires patience. Yeah. At literally studying, you know. Yeah. So uh so Mr. Miyagi's hope was that that process mm-hmm. would sort of help Daniel tame his demons right you know 
Uh, but then, you know, it's a movie and the tournament comes and then, right. you know, then there's that. Thing. Yeah, but it all, <laughs> I, if I remember correctly, it feels like it's earned because he's accepted that, like, he shouldn't be doing this out of vengeance. Right. Which, uh, yeah. And there's empathy in the in the in Right. The too. Right. And even towards the end, you know, where he was uh, on the table with the with the knee messed up. And, right. You know, right, right. and Mr. Miyagi said, you don't need to fight anymore. You've yeah. already proven yourself, yeah. you know. And so then Daniel came back with, well, this isn't this isn't for. Uh, for that this is for me i want to have balance with myself that i gave yeah. everything i had you know which i don't know i think that's crap i think i think i think he he wanted to he wanted one more crack at johnny yeah. <laughs> with a with a cheating move you know right for saying? sure <laughs> for sure but they all have their anger that stems from different things right? right like like um the the kind of true villain is uh johnny's teacher yeah uh and and he's angry out of just kind of disappointment I yeah student, yeah right or if you look at daniel and johnny's character mm -hmm. both of them had absent fathers and right. so they adopted different guys as their father figure right right both were in the military but serving for different reasons right right you know? <laughs> good point yeah good point <laughs> wow yeah yeah so anyways well this is a great topic i like to uh continue talking about this because i think anger is one of those things that we can actually channel the energy the fire that comes from it in a good way but we have to be very uh mindful about it yeah yeah so all right well that is it for this week's podcast we'll catch y'all next week